Hello students, today uh, we are going to uh, discuss about the uh, threads in Java. So thread is actually a single flow of control. So a single flow of control in a program is called as uh, a thread. So a program with only one single main method is also called as uh, a thread. So but actually what we are going to discuss here or what I am going to explain here is about the multi-threading concept. So before going to the multi-threading, we need to know about what is a thread. So actually, thread is an individual execution of a program. So within a single program, we can have multiple uh, threads. So uh, with an example, if I want to explain you, is about a video game if you are playing. So in the video game, you are connected with the network. The graphics is uh, running and also the user interface is also going on. You move your mouse and uh, uh, so the key and all that so that is the user interface all these three are divided into a uh, different threads in the same program so it's in the same program that we have different threads so like this if i want multiple tasks to be done so on that multiple task is not between two processes it is but within one single process so in the in such situations we come across with the threads so uh, what is the multi-threading is just about what I explained now is uh, having multiple threads in a single program and uh, what is the difference between multi-processing and multi-threading is so the operating system takes care of scheduling between one one process and the other process that is when should one process execute and when the other should execute so the operating system takes care of and the memories are also different so memory space is also different and the contact switching is done between one process and the other process but here in this multi-threading what happens is so within a single process the operating system takes care of executing multiple threads so that's what the difference between uh, the multi-threading and multi-processing okay so and uh, how it actually works is the operating system is uh, taking the responsibility and operating system is doing everything so but here in the multi-threading the user can create their own threads so in multi-processing the user is not supposed to do anything so user uh, has only uh, one thing that he what he can do is he can just go on executing different processes but here in this multi-threading the user can create its own thread that is when you open uh, a browser so in the browser you can open different threads uh, that is different tabs and each and every tab that you open in a browser can is executed as threads so that's how uh, the multi-threading works and then uh, uh, speaking about the advantages so because one, only one single task done by one uh, by the thread is not so advantageous because i have so many things to do and only one single thread is doing all that so that may be a little cumbersome for one single control and the uh, user has may, may have to wait for uh, too many seconds so that can be divided and then uh, if i want to speak about the disadvantages of the multi-thread uh, having too many threads and uh, one thread is waiting for the other resource and the other th thread is also waiting for the same resource so like that uh, uh, there are more uh, occurrences of deadlocks so deadlock uh, may occur so and uh, that may be one of the disadvantage uh, what we can speak and now uh, we will go in detail about uh, the threads how it is executed in java that is in java uh, we have direct support for multi-threading so many uh, other languages so there we have to add on support there is always an add-on support but here in this java the uh, java virtual machine has uh, 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 direct support for this uh, multi-threading and there are thread classes and uh, runnable interface so which are used for accompanying all these uh, threading concepts so the we'll speak about different uh, states of thread uh, why because uh, the thread is born the thread is blocked the thread may may go to the runnable state the thread may be executing and thread may be may be entering into the dead state that is the thread is born and the thread is killed that is the thread enters into the uh, dead state so the thread is always in any one of these states so it may be in block state it may be born it may be in the dead state like this so it it always uh, moves through all these different threads uh, all these uh, uh, different states and then that is how we execute the threads that is 
we will go to the first step of uh, the first uh, state of the uh, threads that is in the bond state so the bond state is what we mean is it is the thread is just created and it is going to be executed not uh, executing it is going to be executed that is the thread is just created and it has its own memory now next is the uh, ready state so ready state uh, is also called as runnable state that is it is in the ready queue and it has not yet got uh, the cpu it has not got the processor it needs to go into the ready it needs to go into the running state but it is waiting in the ready queue that is the runnable state and next is the running state the running state is what when i when i say that the process is executing it is active so that state is called as executing state or running state so next is uh, the dead state so we uh, the thread reaches the thread uh, dead state when uh, the thread is terminated it doesn't have any memory it is been removed from the memory or i i purposefully i want uh, the thread to be killed and i terminate the thread so in such uh, cases otherwise uh, it auto, it also enters into the dead state when it has completed its execution so there also it and uh, we have the chance that the thread goes to the dead state so then uh, we'll speak about some other uh, different states uh, other than these running executing dead state that is in the blocked state so this is very important that is blocked state the, where uh, the uh, the thread enters into the blocked state when something wrong happens like uh, the thread is made to wait for something the thread doesn't uh, have any resources so that it can execute so because of all these other uh, reasons the thread and the, uh, the thread may enter into the blocked state so when the thread is in the blocked state it doesn't have the cpu it cannot execute nothing uh, that is after from the after uh, moving from the blocked state to the uh, runnable state then it can go to the running state that is blocked state is something like it is idle the thread is idle okay so next is the waiting state so blocked state is one special thing and the waiting state where i am making the thread to wait for some uh, of some event to occur that is the programmer will uh, uh, deliberately so he will make the thread to uh, go into the waiting state that is by using the sleep methods like that we have different uh, methods which can be used for making the thread to go to the uh, this thing so that is the waiting state so when it is made to wait when will when will the thread come back to its uh, runnable state or to the running state it is by using the notify method that is sleep method is used for going into the waiting state and the notify method is used for coming back to the runnable state so these are the different states in which the thread uh, executes so uh, by this block diagram or this uh, pictorial representation you can see that the thread is created it goes to the runnable state and also it goes to the blocked state so uh, while it is executing in the runnable state it may go to the dead state otherwise when it is executing it may go to the blocked state so from the blocked state it has to come back to the uh, that is the runnable state and only then it can start its execution that is from the blocked state you cannot directly make the thread to go to the dead state so this is how uh, the thread moves on between uh, different uh, states and that's how the threads execute